Julie Usher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. We are back doing chocolate lace doilies. These have been some of my most popular videos with the doilies and the wraps. I've got a multicolor wrap, cake wrap coming up like that one on another video. But I suggest that if you haven't yet done a cake wrap or a multicolor cake wrap, you start with a doily. I've got a beginner doily, one color doily, just with semi-sweet chocolate in another video. In this video, we're taking it up a level by adding color. And here's an example of that. I alluded to this color doily actually in that first video and I showed a sunflower type pattern on the doily. This is exactly the same technique except I'm doing, I don't know what this flower is, maybe more uh, an anemone or something. I don't know what this is. So, but I'm gonna show you the tracing, how to trace. The last doily was done freehand and how to add color. Why might you use these? They make a beautiful underliner for a dessert. Just a, a gorgeous showpiece. You can also temper the chocolate with this application, which will allow the chocolate to stand more rigid longer at room temperature. So these could make sculptural pieces that go on cakes as well. Today we're working with untempered chocolate because I'm gonna, I'm gonna be lying them flat and that just saves me a step. And I know I'm, I'm not gonna need the chocolate super rigid. Tempering though will allow it, give it more rigidity and shine than not tempering it. Okay, so this is a little bit easier in one respect than that single color doily because I'm gonna be tracing it. It's a little harder because I'm using so many colors and I've got at least five or six in here. But I did wanna show you the tracing approach if you're not comfortable working freehand. Find a pretty picture. I found this in a book at my craft store. It's a stained glass coloring book and it has all sorts of fun floral pictures. But I happen to like this pattern. Um, you want to work on a rigid surface because once the chocolate's piped, you want to be able to move it somewhere. So I've got a cardboard here. I'm going to stick my piece of acetate on top, clean piece of acetate. And you can also pipe on parchment paper, but obviously since we're tracing, we need to see through it. So we need to work on something we can see through, and acetate's ideal. I'm cleaning off some fingerprints I see on this because those are areas where the chocolate may end up sticking or where the chocolate won't look as shiny as it could. And as long as they're not on the side that I'm piping on, we're okay, but I think they are. So I think this side is the cleaner side. We'll put it down. Okay, and then I'm just centering it. I've marked a guide, which is roughly the diameter of the plate I'm gonna put it on. And it also captures a nice part of the picture. I wanna capture more flower than leaf, so I'm gonna move it up here. And it's, it's a wise idea to tape the two together while you're piping so that if the so that the underlying picture won't shift. I've got a lot of extra picture here, so I'm gonna cut that off and tape the other edge as well. And I use blue painter's tape whenever I'm taping anything, mostly because it comes off pretty easily. You don't have to struggle to get it off. Just wanna make sure everything's lying pretty flat so there's no wave in your doily. I think that's pretty good. And I'm gonna start by piping the dark chocolate outline. And then we'll come back in and fill in with color. The other advantage of using acetate, not only can you see through it, which you need to for this application, but it will also leave a nice shiny finish when you first unveil the chocolate. So I've cut a very small hole because I want these to be pretty fine lines. I may have to open it up as I go. Right now the chocolate's kind of warm, so it's flowing pretty quickly and it's spreading a lot but as it cools down, as I work with it, I may have to open that up. This is why it's useful to have it on a cardboard so you can move it. And I'm gonna move from the blue corners so that I don't lift up these edges as I pipe. So I'm just piping the outline to start. I'm gonna put a frilly little, frilly little border on that, little loopy border, so we'll do that next. I rotate as I go because my piping becomes less straight when I'm not looking straight down on it. One other comment on the acetates, you wanna use a relatively lightweight one. This is three mil acetate, food grade acetate, as opposed to like five or eight mil that come in different thicknesses. It's a little flimsier and that's good because it'll, you'll be able to peel it off the chocolate with less struggle, so there's less likelihood of breaking the chocolate when you remove the acetate later. With some of the more rigid uh, 
acetates, they can be challenging because they don't, they don't really bend or they bend abruptly and that can break the chocolate. I'm using a high-grade couverture chocolate, like a Ghirardelli. Actually, I think this is Ghirardelli today or Calibo or Valrona all work well. You can use candy melts for this particular project. They don't flow quite as nicely as real chocolate and of course they're not as tasty, but you don't have to use candy melts. You can if you'd like. And now I'm just tracing the pattern as best I can. There's a little buckle to my acetate. It's not lying completely flat, so ideally it could be a little flatter. I think I can work with it though. These little areas in here are a little too close. It's just going to be look like blobs of chocolate because the chocolate does spread when it hits the acetate. So I'm not going to fill those in. And you'll get a sense of how much you can fill in, how much of the detail you can capture in chocolate. It may not be all of it, depending on the detail of the pattern. But I can get most all of this. As you can see from the example in front of me, this is the exact same pattern I use for that. I start by tracing, and then I fill in the color. And then once I unmold it, I sometimes add details on top. Like I added dots and other little details on top of this particular piece. We may or may not do that today. It's most important that you understand this transfer technique. So it's just a tracing process. And the other thing to point out is I'm not dragging the chocolate. To get a nice rounded line, I'm letting it fall freely. My tip of my bag is about oh, an eighth to a quarter of an inch off the work area. OK, I'm almost to the end with the dark chocolate, I'm ready to come back and start filling in colors. One thing to notice is, even though my opening is hardly perceptible on this, it does spread and flow a little bit more once it hits the acetate. So unlike royal icing, which holds a line really, really well, chocolate is a little harder to control. It, and it takes a different speed of piping. It flows faster, so you have to pipe faster with it. So I've got a purple here, and I'm going to shade the outer part of the flower with a little bit of this purple following the contour of that area. You could do whatever you want, but I'm just trying to mimic the one I've already done. And here I'm trying not to commingle with the brown that I just piped so that they don't spread in, they don't, so one doesn't smear into the other. I'll do these little daisy type shapes in purple. Okay, I've got a, a darker pink now. I'm going to just fill in above on the big, the big inner petals of these flowers. They're going to be two tones. I'm filling in with a dark pink here. And then all the outer petals around the center. And again, this is the back side. So if it's looking lumpy and messy, that's OK, because when I open it up, flip it over, it should look a lot, lot cleaner. And again, there's no rule for this. I'm just mixing things up a little bit so it looks like there's some shading on the flowers. Dark, dark in the center, light to the outside. OK, I'm back with the dark green. And I like to work if I'm going to use shades of the same color, dark to light, because when I'm done with this, I'll just add a little white chocolate to get the lighter shade of it. So I'm going to do half, the leaf, half of each leaf in green, or, or the centers of each in dark green, and all the little vines the trail through here will be dark green. So basically, this is a process that's similar to outlining and flooding with the royal icing, except I'm not letting that any of the chocolates set up until I get it into the fridge for the final chill. Total piping time on this is a six inch round. will probably be about a half an hour, 45 minutes. My lace wraps for six inch cakes can go a little bit longer than that if I'm filling them entirely full. So just plan accordingly. And have all your chocolates ready to go and melted at the outset. Then you don't have to spend a lot of time waiting in between. And you don't want to wait because the chocolate can do weird things. If it, if it starts to set up while you're still piping, some of the colors can, when they do finally set, can bloom with a gray haze because the chocolate in this particular project has not been tempered. If you temper it, that's less likely to be an issue. 
Okay, I believe this is the fifth color, light green, filling out the other half of each leaf or any outer edges of leaves. Here I want to make sure the chocolate's really fluid and getting down in and around the areas already piped. So I am tucking it a little more with my tip carefully and I added a little of the Paramount Crystals which are the hydrogenated palm oil to allow this to flow a little more smoothly. Second to last color, yellow. This is a really bright yellow and you'll notice the chocolate can, if you put a lot of food coloring in white chocolate, it can thick, start to seize it and thicken it. And you'll, this is why this one's not flowing quite as smoothly, loosely as some of my others. And that's when those palm oil crystals or cocoa butter additives can be helpful. I did add a little bit in here to improve flowability. So I, I filled the center of the daisies, but there weren't too many to be filled, honestly. So I'm gonna just put a few little stray yellow dots around for highlights, like I did on the other doily. Purely optional. And again, this process could be substantially faster with fewer colors, one color, not filling the whole thing in. But the key thing is that all the chocolate should connect to another piece of chocolate in some way, shape, or form. It doesn't have to be solidly filled, but if they're not connected, this will fall apart when you try to take it off the acetate later. And now we'll fill in with blue as if that's sky surrounding all of that as the last color. And then immediately into the fridge or freezer to quick set it so that we can take it off the acetate and do the big reveal. Again, this is the underside, so don't worry if it looks a little clunky and messy. It will surprise you when it comes off the acetate. Okay, so I'm getting the last bit of blue in and straight, it can go into the fridge and, and when it's firmly completely set up, then you can remove the acetate. I think at this point, I'm gonna remove the tape though, because if I do this when the doily is set up, there's more likelihood for it to snap the lace. So we'll just loosen the tape so I don't have to struggle with this later. And it's just, this is now a good time to get a bird's eye view and make sure you didn't miss any holes, miss any spots. And I've got a couple holes here, we'll go with blue. Okay, I'm gonna actually set this in the freezer to quickly accelerate the chilling of it. Okay, it just came out of the freezer. Sometimes, and this will happen in the fridge too, the acetate or the parchment can curl as it, as it um, chills, which is fine. That's usually an indicator that it's ready to come off. And I'm going to invert it. You could have taken the design out earlier too if you wanted to do many of these. I'm going to, inv I'm going to invert it on my hand and just carefully peel off the acetate a little bit from each side. And then let it rest on the ultimate plate. And it will relax into place as it warms up a little bit so that then it will be flat and you can chill it again and then ultimately stack them in between sheets of parchment paper or acetate in the fridge, for instance, if you wanted to hold it for another occasion. So it looks beautiful. I love the sheen that the acetate lends. You could leave it as is or you could also add additional details. I think I'm going to just show you the, a little bit of the addition of uh, detail. Here you'll notice that I've got um, tiny little dots and some lines that add some interest. And I think I want to add a little bit to this doily as well. So one thing I did on that one, and here I'm working with my semi-sweet chocolate again, is I did little dots all along here. And when you're piping on cold chocolate, the chocolate will set and form little peaks. So you might find it necessary to really get this chocolate hotter. See mine's peaking a little bit or to add more of that hydrogenated palm oil to it so that it flows really smoothly. And I might go back and put a little bit in this dark chocolate. I'm back with the chocolate a little more fluid. So for instance, I don't love this one here. It's really peaky, but because the chocolate underneath is cold, it's easy enough to take it off with, with that trussing needle and then replace it with a nicely rounded dot. You can go crazy with details. You can not add details. I think it tends to add some interest to the pattern. What I like to do sometimes is do a dragging technique rather than dots. And this is where I do make content 
with the surface here is for making lines. These look like little accents on the petals. So I, I'm starting by piping a little bead and then just dragging the tip. Now on these leaves, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, there's some little gaps between the light green and the dark green chocolate, and that's because the chocolate was a little thick. You know, remember I mentioned that it was, I needed to thin it out? And um, that's because they didn't flow quite up next to each other, but I can hide some of that with details if I don't like it. So I'll just continue detailing that out until we end up with something that looks pretty similar to this. If you're ready to take it up an even higher level, then skip on over to my chocolate lace wrap doily and I'll show you how to apply the same basic piping technique but get it up on the sides of the cake. Till then, live sweetly.